jump into the video, make sure you check out my Patreon account. It's designed for serious medical aesthetics providers just like you. Hey, Dr. Joshua, how's it going? Hello. Hello, very well, thanks. How are you? I'm well, thanks. Thanks for joining us here. Dr. Joshua is a central London, UK based physician. He works on Harley Street. He's worked in the past with top companies in UK and Netherlands, and he's gained the respect of top physicians and plastic surgeons in the field of medical aesthetics throughout the world. So we're, we're actually going to talk a little bit of a, you know, a little controversial topic, PDO threads. Dr. Subio just posted something recently, which is like perfect timing for us. So we'll get into that. Uh, but yeah, so basically when we're looking at periorbital rejuvenation, this is something that I'm really taking a liking to as well. Like this is something that I love doing. Let's start off with the tear troughs. So with the tear mm -hmm. troughs, I used to do a little BD syringes where I would do little fillers with a needle. And then recently I've made my transition into cannula. Which I was just that. gonna ask, when you do that BD syringe thing, how do you find that after 12 months, 18 months, how do you find that that filler is sitting? You know what? To be honest, I, it works really well. I find personally the, the end result is actually really good because it gets me right underneath the muscle. I, I can feel the bone. There's like a little ridge on the orbital rim and I try and get it in that ridge and I know that I'm underneath the muscle. I'm right on the bone. So the actual mm -hmm. end result is good. The The only mm -hmm. concern is that, man, it's like a 50% chance you're going to get bruising. Oh, yeah. Black I mean, you don't even make it through that very delicate vascular bed. And with the cannula from below, you're just missing it entirely. See, my, my main issue with the BD syringes, because I've tried a couple of variations of that technique, especially on people who are a little bit puffy and where you could really appreciate the, the, the accuracy that a BD syringe can get you. My main issue, there's an increased risk of migration, of tracking of the filler through those needle points and then being stuck superficially. And you know how that superficial tear trough filler, when they smile and they have that little patch yeah. there like that little bump that never never fully goes away like that's something that i found a lot a lot more when you're doing tear troughs with the needle so i've not done that for a long 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 time i do exclusively cannula now but your downtime your bruising is is, is so much better but also you know, the more we do this, the more we have to think of our long-term results. And when I say that, I mean like two, three years down the line, because unlike what the companies out there are saying, you and I know this filler isn't gone in 12 months. Yeah. Little bits of that get left behind. And that's amazing if it's done right. That's a good question, right? A lot of people ask me, you know, how long do these fillers last? I'm, I'm hearing things that they last like 10 years, 15 years, seeing MRI studies. Like, what does that mean? Is that bad or is that good? And my response to that is always kind of two, two ways to look at it, right? So what we're injecting is a synthetic version of hyaluronic acid. We make our own hyaluronic acid. We find a way to create a bond. And after about a year to two years, that bond breaks down and then the hyaluronic acid integrates into our natural tissues. Now, that's something that possibly could be seen on an MRI even 10, 15 years down the road. And is that bad? I don't think it's bad. It's just a synthetic version of having something that's going to hydrate our tissues. For me, it's a concern if it ends up pocketing and if it makes like a little cyst or if it's migrated to too superficially yeah. and you've got these bumps and they're staying there forever, that's problematic. Yeah, we actually, uh, very interesting, we just had a, we had a patient cancel today, so I had like 40 minutes to mess around a little bit. So I took my ultrasound and just played around with it a little bit and found some deposits of filler like mid face, deep medial cheek fat. I haven't had mid face filler for at least four years. So this must have been filler that's been put in there three years ago. And I could like, I literally watched it on the scanner today, like it's there. So nobody's gonna tell me that it's not. What do you think of your scans? Are you using it often? I'm using it a lot for corrections. I'm not really using it for injections myself. An yeah. ultrasound was, it was never an easy image to read. You know, not even back in medical school, and it's definitely not now. So using all those things, like balancing, putting it in the right spot, trying to read that, takes so much of my attention away from looking and feeling where I am. 
which is what I personally find works better for me. Obviously, I'm, I can understand that that's different for everyone, um, but that's one of the reasons why I don't particularly like to use it while injecting filler, mm -hmm. mainly to detect incorrectly placed filler or old filler from other patients that come to you for corrections or for dissolving cases that have had multiple dissolves in the past that didn't seem to get it, and maybe if it's encapsulated, a filler it can be really tricky to dissolve, especially if it's deep. If it's in the lip, superficial, you know, you pop it with the needle, it's fine, it's relatively easy. Deep encapsulated filler in the nasal labial or mid face, you know, you're not going to pop that or, or aspirate that. So to be able to get in there with the needle and an ultrasound and a syringe of highways, that definitely adds value to your treatments. Yeah, I have one too. I don't use it as often as I thought I would. I, it's, it is a little time consuming to, to use. I try and convince everyone, every provider to try and get to a cannula as soon as possible because it's much safer. I was doing a, uh, another one of these with Lee Walker and he gave a study of like, you know, it's 75% safer, but I think it's higher than that because I know the study he was talking about and I forgot that that study only indicated all types of cannulas. It didn't look at the gauge and I only use a 25 gauge for almost all my procedures. So the 25 gauge, because it's thicker, it really reduces the chance of like, an intravascular occlusion. So I would like to see a new study come out with an updated one where it says 25 gauges or more, like what are the chances? And I think it's, it's so low that people are going to be shocked and it's going to guide people to using more cannulas. And as a result, I don't really use the ultrasound that much. If I'm going to do a chin, if I do a temple, if I'm going to do somewhere I need to do yeah. kind of like a combination and I'm using a needle, I'll take it out. But if I'm using cannula, I, I generally don't. I find that the risk really depends on the area. Whereas I'm one of those believers that think if you're using cannula, cannulas in noses, you're actually more inclined to cannulate a blood vessel because of the tightness of the anatomy. So people going this way into the nose are completely in line with the blood vessels. It's a very tight, stuck anatomy. Your chances of putting that in and then staying in over the course all causing a much more significant occlusion than a tiny pinprick with a needle would be. The chance of that happening is a lot, lot bigger than if you go perpendicular and you use small bolus injections with the needle. Even if you hit a blood vessel then, if you do tiny injections, you know, with BD syringes, only 0 0.01, 0 0.02, you're never going to get a full thickness necrosis. At worst, you'll have some you know, ischemia, you dissolve it and it'll be fine. You know, you're not going to get blindness, you're not going to get necrosis, you're not going to get any of that. But a cannula coming in here, pushing up, and then that's, you know, nasal artery makes a little bend centrally and then back, pop it in here, and the cannula is not blunt enough to exit that blood vessel again. So all that filler that you're going to be injecting is going to clog that top to bottom. That's when you're going to get your full thickness necrosis. That's when you're going to get your blindness. So I'm a very big fan of cannulas. Uh, you said you only use 25 gauge. I use every cannula. I've got them all and I use them all, all for different things. But in some areas, I think needles are safer, uh, yeah. even when it comes to vascular occlusions. I agree. For the nose, I definitely use the BD syringe and I feel the same way. I, I think I posted that on one of my YouTube videos saying that the cannula has actually caused just as many, if not more, problems with the nose whenever they did it by cannula, but they didn't say the, the gauges. Now, you make a good point with regards to your different sizes of cannula because we were talking about the tear troughs, but I see that you also do the upper eyelid correction, and uh, that's a, a really cool one, actually. I did post a video on that, too. There's not too many people who do it, mm. and it's great for, like, A-frame deformities. I've Brilliant. It's, it just gives you that little cherry on the top when it comes to treating the eyes if you're able to fix an A-frame deformity i have tried to do it on other people who've had really deep hollows and sunken eyes mm -hmm. didn't really look too great so i definitely feel like there's a specific kind of candidate that that's going to work well for it's so a different type of treatment that you're doing for severe hollowing versus a-frame correction for a-frame correction you're more thinking of restoring the contour of the eye and for severe hollowing you're more thinking of just general volumization which is something that needs to be approached extremely carefully in the upper eyelid area. Um, so generally, you'll see those people two, three times over about a six month period. And you're injecting more along the entire course. And generally, what I do is I go a little bit deeper than, than I would for an A-frame deformity. Excellent, man. Well, this was super fun. Thank you so much for, for joining me. I hope Thanks for having me. I had a really uh, good time. Yeah, I know this is like, we, we hit some controversial topics here. We kind of gave our realistic peace of mind. So I, I hope you I'm all about that. that.
cool. Well, I, I behaved today, you know, I behaved. <laughs> That's great. But thanks everyone for joining. This has been super fun, man. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Cheers, man. man.